Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. And if you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. First of all, I need to say thank you to all of you for saying congratulations to my wife, Romy, yesterday, turning 46 years. I will turn 46 in another 10 days. So, yes, she's older than me now. Really beautiful time. 10 days, I'm younger than her. Now, uh, in today's video, guys, we have five amazing Bitcoin charts. One of those charts showing you exactly where we are in the Bitcoin adoption another chart comparing something really cool that happened to me uh, now to the current time so really interesting to see that chart uh, also of course talking about someone that is now almost owning 6,000 bitcoins this is very important talking about a person that turned 3k into 46 million of course also talking about something that happened to me here in Spain while driving the car and yes of course an inspirational quote and a little bit of the news guys let's quickly jump into the charts first to show you exactly where we are with Bitcoin and what is going to happen next Bam. the first chart for today guys is this four hour chart look how beautifully again that buy signal the candles were above the yellow stepping line. There was a lot of green. The blue line was above the white line. The white line was still at levels of 50, so we know we can go to 90. Yes, beautiful trade again. Uh, of course, topping out here at resistance level. Um, it's giving a sell, so that's being exiting your trade now or waiting for the candle close down below the yellow stepping line if you will want to hold a little bit more in this trade because if you look you know i drew that sloppy sloppy hands i told you at that time eh, maybe it is an inverse and then shoulders also in the daily somebody said no it isn't it's like uh, going out of another pattern uh, a pendant i think he said yeah it is both of them are but this head and shoulder is also there and i told you guys yeah we will go here down here this green line and go up so this was all drew with sloppy hands but yeah we're kind of following those sloppy hands move so pullback is always good after a little bit of uh, bullish movement pull back to the yellow and maybe even go higher to the 67 this area break it and then even to 72k that would be the perfect scenario for bitcoin and um, if we zoom out, we can see that on a daily chart that a uh, pennant indeed, and we are inside of the pennant and we are now again touching the top of the pennant. And um, we are now above that green line, which is very positive, which will lead probably to that green line curving up again. And that means it's not going to cross that blue line. And we don't want it to cross the blue line. The blue line is the 12 moving average. I will click it so you can see it on the weekly. And this green line is the 50 moving average on the daily. So the 12 moving average on the weekly is kind of normally a good line to have support on in the bull markets let's look back into history to show you a little bit over here for example we can see here that at 12 and at green they are support in the bull market the green is above uh, the blue line and yes we can have crosses like this for a little bit but then we need to come above it again with that green line and that was the previous bull market now if you look at it now we can see the same setup we went above it came a little bit down below it above down below and now we need to stay above that so uh, for me this is very beautiful to see that if on this daily that green line is going to turn up again and uh, be above that blue line amazing then let's jump into some more interesting charts this is the first one guys this is the bitcoin price performance since the halving so we can see an orange a red a blue and a green line so these, these are all the different epochs epoch one when we still were mining 50 bitcoin each block 2 25 bitcoin 12 and a half 6.2 and now the gray the gray one is the latest epoch that we just started from the halving 3.125 bitcoin per block guys this is that gray area that is where we are this is where we are going. This was the top of the first one, the top of the second one. This was the top of the third one. Here was the top again of that green one, the fourth one. That was the double top. Here was another top. This is where we are now, completely in the beginning. We still need to make a lot of moves before we get to the bull market top area. And my husband's opinion is going to be somewhere in September 2025. But it's very interesting to see how did we move till now only in the beginning we still need to move another 12 to 18 months to reach a top then we have this one where are we at the moment when it comes to bitcoin you know i got in here at the innovators and then a lot of you got in here at the early adapters now since that the bitcoin spot etf is live since that we have mass adoption in the institutional investment market i think we are going from that area to the wall product solution to the early majority 
and that early majority can be 34% of all the people ever going into Bitcoin. But don't forget that there also will be a late majority and even laggers. That's another 50% of the people that will go in Bitcoin later. With that 34%, that's now more than 80% that still needs to go into Bitcoin. We are just getting started. That mass adoption among retail investors was already there. Now among the institutional investors and the countries and the pension funds and all that stuff is getting started. That is when a shitload of more people and liquidity will go into the market. And it will become mainstream. And when it becomes mainstream, that is when the real adoption is happening. And that is also when the demand will grow tremendously. And when the demand is growing tremendously, but the supply is not growing, we all know what will happen to the price. In this chart, you can see what will happen with the price. The Bitcoin relative unrealized profit loss. Whenever this is really high over here, the unrealized profit, uh, there's a short-term holder and the long-term holders. The blue one is long, the red one is short. When it's really high, we are in the bear market. When it's really low, we are on the bull market. So, top here, very high. In the bear market bottom, a lot of people in loss. And the, here, when we are at the top, that's when a lot of people are in profit. So, at a dip, again, people in loss. And in the bear market bottom, more people are lost. And now people are screaming that the bull market might be in an end. This is where we are. This is where we are. This is exactly the moment where we need to be in this bull market. We need to stay low. People need to stay in profit. And as long as they stay in profit, we can create new autumn highs, higher highs. The moment we see another wave of higher losses, so people being in loss, short-term and long-term holder, so less so more losses, less profits, the, more we, the moment we see these peaks again, that is the moment when you need to start watching out and exchanging Bitcoins into stablecoins. Simple as that. The moment you see this increasing tremendously is the moment you need to get out. Now the most interesting part uh, is this chart. I found the price of a home. This is exactly why I've been telling you, you should always be in Bitcoin. The price of a home in 2016 was 288,400 US dollar. At that moment, you need to pay 664 Bitcoin. That same house in 2024 is more expensive. It will cost you now 434,700 US dollar. So in dollars, you're paying way more. From 288 in 2016 to 328 in 2020, to $434,000 in 2024. If you look now in Bitcoin, 664 Bitcoin in 2016, only 45 Bitcoins was needed in 2020, and today we only need 6.6 .6 Bitcoin to buy that house. There is nothing more clear showing you why I would always sell my house and we always be buying Bitcoin with that overvalue. Because that house can increase in price which also means you need more dollars to buy that house in the future, probably all other goods. But in Bitcoin, it is decreasing. You need less and less Bitcoin to buy these huge houses. So it also counts for other products. Also counts for rent. You could rent that house for $2,000, probably now for $4,000. But in Bitcoins, it's less and less Bitcoins that you're using to rent those houses. This is why it's a deflationary asset. You need less of it every time again and again because we can't print new ones, just 21 million. That's the cap. So if you would have sold your house over here in 2016, you would have received 664 Bitcoins. You would be able to buy that house back now with six Bitcoins. So we still have 658 Bitcoins left to buy other stuff because you went into Bitcoin. If you would have bought your house with US dollars, you wouldn't have anything except the house. That house would have grown now with around 150,000 US dollar value. Yes, you were 150,000 US dollar richer now. You could have been millions of dollars of richer.
I hope you really enjoyed those charts, guys. Yes, short term, we had a beautiful run, almost 66K, pulling back to 65,500. Probably, again, continuing this move all the way to 67, 68, maybe even if we break those levels to 72,000 US dollar per Bitcoin. Amazing times for Bitcoin. I told you to buy at 57. We're already almost at 67 now. That's a 10K profit because you listened to me. If you didn't listen to me, but to all those other influencers that told you to wait to 52, Sorry for that. I am always right. <laughs> no, not always, but mostly I am right, guys. Uh, we are again around 70k. Beautiful times for Bitcoin. Zoom out. Look at that bigger picture, guys. We are gonna go two new all-time highs before the end of this year. So 74, 75K, easily broken before the end of this year. Are we gonna go to 100K this year? It is even possible, but I do expect another pullback around December to January, like always, the January pullback, and then again the continuation all the way into September to December 2025 to make the bull market top, the real all-time high above 100K, 120 to 160K. And if we get lucky, or if all those people are right that tell four, to 500k i will be very happy as well but again i'm a little bit more bearish 120 160k beautiful bull market top and of course guys wearing a beautiful t-shirt from our own shop born to be free beautiful because we're all born to be free guys for today i have two trading tips. The first trading tip is about a news item. I really like the news item, but also want to educate you through that news item. The news item is that there was a kid turning 3K into 46 million by investing in Pepe meme coin. Now, so that Pepe meme coin made this kid from 3,000 US dollar 46 million US dollar. He already cashed out like around seven and a half million dollars. So he still has like around 40 million dollars he could cash out at the moment. Or maybe he's even higher for Pepe to go higher than the current price, guys. The thing that I want to educate you about is these things don't happen very often. You need to be very lucky to invest very early in the right meme coin that will explode to highs so that you will make 46 million out of 3K. This is not like something that's happening daily. So don't let that make you crazy. Don't start to invest now with all those meme coins and hope that one of those meme coins, bam, will explode to 46 million. It just doesn't happen that often. And you know, when it happens, sometimes they were very patient. Like for example, myself, when I started to invest in Dogecoin, I started mining Dogecoin already in 2013, 14. I mined more than 20 million Dogecoin with a group of friends, of which I held a couple of million Dogecoins myself. And the last two million Dogecoin I sold in the last bull market when and it went to 60 cents. But I needed to wait eight years for that. 2021 to 2013. That's eight years of waiting before I sold my Dogecoin with a shitload of profit. Now, this meme coin was not that old, so yes, he did do it in a very short period, but it's not just common that everyone that invests in meme coin will become a millionaire because of that, guys. If you want to look at a meme coin, then look at Gummy, because I think Gummy is really a really cool uh, meme coin with a nice theme. I think, yeah, of course, not they don't have utilities as all other coins, but uh, Gummy does have some utility over there. And you can also use it to stake and, you know, multiply your capital and all that stuff, but it's more about fun. So I invested in Gummy for fun, and I think that gummy will do another huge run yeah and make my few k a little bit more worth maybe 100k or 200k whatever it will be guys but you know if you look at gummy at the moment the market have of 90 million other projects that were launched on Sol and also like these meme coins went even to a billion. So it can easily still take Gummy times 10 from these levels just to be able to buy more Bitcoin of the profits that I make with these meme coins, guys. So be warned, not everyone is going to make profit with meme coins. Some get lucky, 3,000 to 46 million. That was really lucky. Also today, guys, another bull market top indicator. Today's indicator to tell you if the top is in is the Bitcoin energy value the Bitcoin energy and the Bitcoin energy value oscillator, you will find them in trading view. They work very simple. When you add them to the chart, this was the pi cycle top. You know that we talked about that one, but if you now look at those two indicators, it's very simple. During the second part of the bull market, we will always be above that red line. You see this? Above that red line. Second part of the bull market, we will be above that red line. Maybe if you look even better uh, further back, like let's see over here, that second part of the bull market, we are above that red line, okay? So that's something very interesting because the moment we are down below that line, we are down below the red line, we need to still go above that red line here. So we are somewhere in this area, down below the red line. 
also in 2017 we are probably somewhere in this area down below the red line we still need to go into the second part you're down below the red line we need to still go into the second part you know down below that one you still need to go into the second part so yes there's an indication that we still need to go into the second part of the bull market and the moment we get above that line that is when the second part really starts now if you now look to the bottom of the screen then you can see whenever these red huge peaks here end around these levels 690 that's exactly when the top was in over there now here this was a distribution top so here we only ended at 300 but you can see that there is a huge wick and another huge wick these huge wicks do you see they are telling you hey we are getting near the bull market top we are not green we are red we are on fire and that fire starts to explode 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 and when those tops are in that is the moment when we are in the bull market top over here as well we became from green we went to red so that's the moment we are above that red line as you can see green is down below the red line red is above that red line that moment we create peaks and when the high peaks come in like around 300 or something that is the moment when we will see a top if we look back in the past over here also we went even to 2570 but we can see those peaks coming in and we can see from green turning red that's the second part of the bull market we are still in the green phase we try to become red but we're still green the moment we go above the red line these will turn red that's the second part of the bull market at the moment we get these huge peaks we know that we need to get out of the market guys and it can be a level of 200 it can be a level of 300 but in my honest opinion it will be somewhere in 2025 that we see a lot of these red areas very good indicator also to look if we are almost at the top of the bull market in the travel tip for today guys i have kind of a funny story when you're traveling please always have your driving license with you, especially when you're driving a car. So what happened to me? Two days ago, I was driving my car. Next to me was Jolie, and in the back was Roman and uh, Jessa and Judah, and of course, our dog, Teddy. Yes, I didn't say gay dog for the first time, but it is a gay dog. Now, we were traveling with our car, and then, okay, we went into this, how do you call this? Like, the police sets up such a catching like folk we say it folk in the Netherlands. i don't know how you say it in the english but yeah we need to stop so the guy does in spanish do you speak spanish how bless me all no no how bless me all solo poquito you know all hablo uh, english so we start to talk english and he's like yeah do you have your driving license with you i said ah shit it's at home you know we just went shopping the driving license um is in my apartment where do you live i told him exactly where we live and he's like yeah but you need to have a driving license like, i don't have it do you have your passport shit, i don't have my passport with me i also forgot it at home but i have a picture a picture picture is not valid he's like um, and then he looks next to me where's Julie is and he's like does your wife has a passport so I look at him like my wife he's like yes does your wife have a passport I said do you really expect me an old dude to have such a young wife and he's like yeah you don't look old exactly <laughs> That's my daughter. So the guy needed to laugh. Luckily, that froze the eyes a little bit. I'm like, no, my wife is in the back. Your wife is always in the back. So yes, she is in the back. She also has a driving license and she has it with her. Then you need to get out of the car and your wife needs to drive. So do you think that is safe, my wife driving over here? And he's like, yeah, she needs to because you don't have your driving license. I had a picture of my driving license, but that's not valid in Spain. Many countries, they, they do accept that, but here it's not valid. So I need to switch seats. My wife was playing flip-flops. We need to wear shoes to drive because in Spain you cannot drive with flip-flops so there's a few rules in Spain you cannot drive with flip-flops you cannot drive without a t-shirt and you cannot drive with your elbow outside the window without the hand touching the steer so there's a few rules you need to know when you're driving in Spain so my, that was the first time uh, Romy needed to drive here in this busy city Torre Vieja uh, yeah but she of course didn't damage the car so that was a very cool story so if you're traveling please always have some identification with you or it's a password or it is a driving license or of course your Palau ID because it's also legal to use your Palau ID as an ID. So uh, that was the travel tip for today. Let's jump into the next part. Answering a question of one of the followers, the question was Didi, I can't use the Bybit debit card anymore in the Netherlands, which debit card can I still use? So there is a couple of debit cards of which the links are down below in this video that I will uh, name now. So first of all, you will all be able to use the Crypto.com debit card. I've been using the Crypto.com debit card already for years. 
very good debit card. Yes, the fees are a little bit high with on ramping and off ramping, but the debit card works perfectly and you even have an IBAN number with that debit card. So you can even send your funds from your bank account to another IBAN number and it will arrive. So Crypto.com, very good one. The second one is WireX. WireX I already used in 2017-18, but when they start to send me like, hey, where does your money come from or your Bitcoins come from? That is when I start, stopped using it, but of course my wife and my daughter continued using it. So WireX is also a very good one. Then you have TOP, T-A-P. TOP is a UK-based debit card system. And there's even on the UK stock exchange. They also have a debit card that you can very easily use. And then you have BITSA, which is a Spanish debit card that you can use, but that even the youth can use because they give a debit card to children from the age of 14 years old. They call that BITSA Young. So that's another four debit cards that you can use. Uh, I'm also testing another debit card at the moment, but that's a multi-level marketing system. It's called Flyback. The link is also down below, but be aware, this is multi-level marketing, which means this could also end bad in the future because I have not seen many multi-level marketing systems in crypto succeed. This could be the first one which officially has a debit card license and officially, if you like, I think take the thousand dollar setup, you even get a gram of gold at your home so it's like real multi-level marketing uh, it's called flight they also have a debit card that you can use guys but be aware it is multi-level marketing those other debit cards are very safe have been using them already for years if you have another debit card that you're using that i don't know of please let me know down below i know of the ledger debit card you know that one is fixed to your ledger but that has really high fees so i don't want to use that one but if you know any other one let me know down below And then the news for the day, guys. Bitcoin is really bad for the environment. I hear this very often. Now, let's take a look at the news today. There is one country that now almost owns 6,000 Bitcoins because they mined Bitcoin in a geothermal volcano way. Yes, I am talking about El Salvador. They now mined 5,750 Bitcoins by using the power coming from a volcano. This is nature. This is not something that is bad for the environment. Bitcoin is one of the most greenest form of assets out there because we are focusing on green energy, wind, water, sun, volcanoes, so fire, whatever you call it. All of these free elements are being used to mine Bitcoin. We can't say that about all those fiat shit coins. They are not using all the beautiful green energy. Bitcoin is now around 50% mined in a green way and El Salvador is a very beautiful country that almost owns 6,000 bitcoins because of mining it with the geothermal power of a volcano and to be clear it took them only three years so it only took them three years to mine 5,750 bitcoins with geothermal volcanic energy it took only three years how beautiful is that just imagine in the future, Norway using their waterfalls, all those countries with volcanoes using their volcanoes, all the countries with shitloads of sun, or Sahara using it with their sun fields, all those countries with too much wind, using all the wind to collect energy to mine bitcoins. Bitcoin is one of the cleanest and greenest way and uses of electricity to create an asset. An asset that is better than all the other assets that you know. It's better than gold. It's better than fiat currencies. It's better than stocks. It's better than all of that combined. Because it is a store of value, the gold of the 21st century, and it is a peer-to-peer -peer cash at the same time. And it's being created in a very clean and green way. So yes, Bitcoin is king. And then the last part on this beautiful Friday morning here in Torrevieja. And then we're going to go into the weekend. And yes, in the weekend, I will do a live AMA, probably in English and Dutch. Uh, not like last week, only English. Now also a Dutch one again in the Netherlands. But the last part of the video, guys, as always, is the inspirational quote. There are five important things to be living a successful and fulfilling life. Number one, never, but never stop dreaming. Number two, never Never, never, never stop believing. Also, never stop believing in Bitcoin. But for everything in life, never stop believing in yourself. Number three, never give up. When you start something, finish it. Don't give up. Number four, never stop trying. Never stop trying. Always try new things. Never stop trying because life might get very boring. 
always try that new thing that you're afraid of. Just do it, try it, never stop trying. And number five, never stop learning. Always keep educating yourself. It's never too late to learn something new. I'm learning new things every day. I love to learn. And you should be loving to educate yourself as well. Maybe that's why you're watching these videos. So you're being educated a little bit more about Bitcoin blockchain and life. But there's way more things in life that you can be educated on. Try to educate yourself, your children as much as possible about life. Not memorizing books, not memorizing all the theories in your head about history and all that stuff. Prepare your kids and yourself for the future, not for the past. And you're not preparing yourself for the future by only reading books from the past. You need to prepare yourself for the future by analyzing the world. What is happening? What can we solve? How can we solve that? What can I do to do a contribution and a solution to that problem that we will have in the future, not that we had in the past? That won't solve anything. They will solve something in the past and that's impossible or you need to have a time machine to fly back to the past. There will be a future and there is a today. So focus on those two moments that you really can change. You can change today, you can still keep dreaming, you can still keep believing today, you can still try everything new today. It's all about today and you can also do all of those things in the future. So only focus on today, what can I do today, and focus on what can I do in the future, or how will that future look, and how should I prepare myself and my children for that future, not for the past. So I think it's very important that you understand that those five things in life are very important. Please never stop dreaming. Please never stop believing. Please never give up. Please always keep trying and always keep educating yourself. If you focus on those elements on today and for the future, then I think that every little thing is gonna be all right. Every little thing is gonna be all right. Don't worry <laughs> about a thing. Yes, that's how we go into the weekend with some reggae music and maybe some other ingredients as well to get a little bit more chill, guys. Now, um, that was the only short inspirational path today. It is a little bit shorter, uh, but I hope you still enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, give the video a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts? What do you think about the tips? What do you think about the story? And what do you think about the inspirational part? Are you going to focus on those five elements to become more happy, to live a beautiful life? Life and fulfilling life, whatever that you're searching for at the moment, guys, try it out. Uh, thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing weekend. Hopefully to see you on one of the live AMAs on Saturday and Sunday. Um, I think Saturday will be the Dutch one and Sunday will be the English one. I just realized that tomorrow, Saturday, yes, tomorrow, Saturday is 18th of May, is Jessa's birthday. Jessa is turning 14 tomorrow. So maybe the Dutch AMA will be a little bit later. Like we do always breakfast on bed and everything. And then maybe around 11 or 12, I will do a Dutch AMA. Now, thank you for watching. I wish you an amazing day and see you tomorrow again. Bam.